want everybody to remember Sunday is homecoming. Okay? So what does that mean? That means that we are going to feed people. So I need food. And whenever I say I need food, I mean I need food. You know, it's the thing because you're going to get a lot of people from other churches that will show up. It's our job to take care of it. So, like I said, we need food. And I'm going to turn it over to the preacher. Hey, I tell you what, uh, if you don't bring food, we don't have a lot to preach. So we don't, don't have a lot to uh, eat if we don't have it here. Praise the Lord. I tell you what, now, we, we're not going to, I'm going to, we're having a, a Baptist uh, service tonight. We're going to get out, get in here, get in the Word. And praise the Lord, I've called a lot of people and uh, invited them to be here Sunday. And we're going to uh, get into the Word here very quick tonight. We'll let you out early. You can go home. You can rest all the rest of the week. And then you'll be ready to go on Sunday morning. Praise the Lord. And uh, we appreciate everybody that's here tonight. And uh, we just uh, want you to remember, pray for one another. I'm, uh, I don't know, we've got so many sick people, we've got so many that uh, we, we're just going to have to pray and ask God to help them to be back, be able to be back in church because they are uh, uh, they're just uh, so many that are sick. Reading in Psalms tonight, uh, the first chapter, you can find out what I make another announcement to. Uh, on Sunday morning, my son Dennis is going to preach on Sunday morning, and Brother Mike Spears is going to be here on Sunday afternoon, and we're going to be just using our singers here at the church, and those that come in, we're not going to have any special one to come in and sing, but we're just going to use those that are here at the church. Praise the Lord. Reading from the first chapter of Psalms. I want you to take close attention to this uh, reading here. Uh, this is what it said. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, neither standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the river of water, bringeth forth its fruit in its season. His leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so but are like to chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly, listen to this, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor the, are sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Think about what I've read to you. There is a lot of messages in this. Praise the Lord, you may be seated. There is a lot of messages, a lot of routes to go in this one psalm here tonight. But he said, bless it. Now I want you to think with me. I want to talk about something about the blessings. And then we'll talk about the sinners. The blessings of the Lord, hallelujah, is made. God has given us promises of the blessings of the Lord. Praise the Lord. But listen, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, neither standeth in the ways of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. And you may tell me, Brother Walsh, I'm just a half-hearted Christian. Hallelujah. Now let's, let's change that around a little bit. Whenever you start talking about being a half-hearted Christian, 
Well, I, I'm cold and I'm this and I'm that. Now, this is what the Bible said. The Bible said, without the Spirit, you are none of mine. Yeah. Hallelujah. And the Bible said, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now, whenever the ungodly, whenever you take an ungodly person, that means, now when you talk about ungodly, we're talking about somebody that doesn't have God. Ungodly. Hallelujah. Somebody that, if you undo something, you first got to be done. Are you following me tonight? Before you can be undone, you have to be done. Before you can be ungodly, you have to be godly. That means ungodly means you was godly, but you turned ungodly. Hallelujah. You say, oh, but Brother Balls, there's no such thing as ungodly people. Praise the Lord. Well, that ain't what my Bible says. That's not at all what I'm, I'm telling you tonight. Hallelujah. He said, blessed is the man that stands in the righteousness of the Lord. Now, let me show you. Psalms 66 and 18 says, if we regard iniquity, God ain't going to hear a prayers. Amen. What is iniquity? Iniquity is wrong. Let me, let me tell you people something. God's not looking, God's not going to take you if you ain't godly. If you don't live right, if you're a cussing Christian, you're a lying Christian, you're a stealing Christian, and you're all living, you're out of this thing. You want to, what do you need to do, Brother Walsh? You need to get on this altar and pray to him. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on now, the Bible teaches us the ungodly cannot stand as set in the congregation of the righteous. Sinners should not be able to sit in our churches and not get under conviction. Amen. But you know why they can do it? You ain't going to like this, but I'm going to tell you why. Because there are so many ungodly people sitting in the congregation. Amen. Amen. Now you think about that. Ungodly. <coughs> but I'm a Christian. Oh, and I'm a Christian Christian. I'm a Christian Christian. I'm a Stephen Christian. Honey, you better wake up Amen. and smell the flowers. Amen. Hallelujah, because, uh, you, you know, there, there, was a, there, there was a man one time, that, 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 and, and this man, there was a man died, and the man uh, went over, and, and whenever they uh, was putting the flowers on his grave, this man brought a can of pork and beans he's sitting on his grave. And they said, why, why are you sitting in pork and beans there? That man can't eat. The important thing is you can't smell them flowers either. <laughs> <laughs> but in a few days I can come back and get the important beans and eat them, then you can't come back in a few days and get them flowers and smell them. <laughs> are you here? Amen. You see, there's too many people. You know God don't have a bunch of people that, hallelujah. Oh, I love you, Brother Walsh. <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah, no, you don't. If you love me, you'd try to serve the Lord. Amen. Because I want you to know that God wants people that are godly. Everything's not going to go your way. I grew up, when I grew up a boy, everything didn't go my way. I got my britches tanned a lot of times. With my dad, he believed in the train style. If you got on the wrong track, switch it. That's what some of you Christians need. You need a good switching. Amen. Praise the Lord. And get on the right track. Come on now. Right. Hallelujah. It's time that God begin to live in our life holy and acceptable. Amen. Not just any way we want Him to live, but He needs to live. Now the Bible said in the 11th chapter of Psalm said, If the foundation be destroyed, what will the righteous do? I want you people to listen to me. The foundation of the church is as low as it can be. People can they, they don't believe in holiness. They don't believe in righteousness. They don't believe in doing the right thing. You're out. You're wasting 
plenty of time. It's quiet in here, but that's all right. Come on, come on, brother. Hallelujah. God expects us to be holy and live right and respectable. Amen. Now, this is what the Bible said. He said to live holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is our reasonable service. But for the walls, I can't live. The, I, don't you tell me that lie. Because I want you to know I've been living for the Lord probably a longer, longer than anybody in this building. And then when people come up to me and say, but I can't serve the Lord. Let me tell you something, you lazy rascal. You don't want to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. The only people that want to serve the Lord is them that will get up and get off of their lazy stool and do nothing and serve the Lord with all their heart. Right. Amen. The ungodly. I'm not so. Well, what are you going to make me mad before I get here out of here? And I don't care if you get mad. Don't bother me a bit in the world. Come on. Hallelujah. It's time that we learn how to live for God. When we say the Lord is my shepherd. If you're sinning and got sin in your life, you're fooling yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. Whenever you say, oh, but now, Brother Walt, I don't do too bad. I'm a pretty good person. God's not looking for pretty, and He's not looking for good. He's looking for righteousness. Amen. Hallelujah. It's time that you and I accepted the fact that God is right. We are wrong, but God is right. When God saves us, He saves us from sin, not in sin. What shall we say then? Romans 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He said, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin keep on sinning? We're free from sin. We've been born again by the Spirit of God. Don't let somebody come along and tell you and take away your... He said, be not deceived. Be not deceived. God is not about whatever soever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Hallelujah. I was reading it, I was reading a little piece to, this week and said, He that he that don't work, don't eat. Don't eat. <coughs> Think about that. If we're going to work for God, if we don't work for God, we can say, well, I'm in the church, I'm in the church. And you know there's people, I'm sure there's people sitting right here tonight that never led nobody to church or nobody to the Lord. I hate you stand before God and God say, where's them people you're supposed to lead to the Lord? Where are they at? Well, I didn't have any, Lord. I, I hid, I know you was hard to please, so I took my towel and I hid it in the ground and kept it, wrapped it up in napkins <laughs> where it wouldn't get dirty. Hallelujah. Come on now. But don't be a fool. Come on. Get alive here. And let the Lord come over and take over in your life. Amen. Amen. Come on. It's time that you and I accepted the fact that God is the boss. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, he ain't my boss. Well, you ain't none of his. He's not your shepherd either. <laughs> Remember that. If he's not your boss, He's not your shepherd. Amen. <laughs> but I, Brother Walt, I want to do what I want to do. Sorry. God just don't have it that way. We do what the Lord wants us to do. When God says pray, I ain't got time, Lord. I ain't got time to pray. I, I, I don't know how to pray. Are you a Christian and don't know how to pray? Are you a Christian and don't know how? I only know you to pray for somebody or say to somebody, come to church. Amen. That's right. Don't know how to say you need to go to that altar and be saved by the grace of God. Hallelujah. God is a God of love. That's right. I have no respect to person, he said. But I want to tell you something. 
He said, I know your uprisings, and I know your downfall. He said, I, I behold the eye of the Lord is ever worse, beholding good and evil. And you sit here mad at me tonight if you want to. God already knows that because he done told me. <laughs> Hallelujah. What are you saying? It don't make me any different. I'm going to preach the word of God. I'm not re required of the Lord to satisfy anybody. That's right. But I'm required of the Lord to tell you that sin is black and sin will separate you from the love of God. Amen. Hallelujah. If you want to do something for God, you've got to get sanctified by the power and the anointing of the glory of God. Get out of the sinning business. Right. Amen. <laughs> when we run out, you take off first. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. The thing that you and I need to do today, we need your church sanctified. All you got to do to make people mad anymore is cross your eyes. Hallelujah. I, I take my glasses off when it cross my eye. Then you can frown at me all day and I just laugh. <laughs> Hallelujah. I see a man go out the back door of church one time running. <coughs> Barney Jackson and I were standing on the platform. This big old long legged gawky guy and he run off down the aisle and he went out the back door to start Bethlehem and uh, over there in Brother Artie Giffen's yard they put a cable across there to keep the cars from going up in his yard about that high off the ground post and hallelujah and this old Shanghai he tore out boy I mean he tore out in a hurry loaded a car <laughs> and Donald Allen was standing there with me and me and Donald and Barney Jackson was down there. We saw him run out that back door, and I said, Oh God, hit that old boy. He went out, and when he got out there, he didn't even bet, bet on the shins. He rolled about four some souls out there. Hallelujah. And he got up, and he come back, and he made him sort of mad. He said, Why did you tell me that that cable was out there? I said, oh, well, I, I thought you was in the spirit. I thought God would tell you that when you got there. <laughs> well, did it make him mad? He didn't like it because I told him that, but it didn't make any difference. <laughs> Listen to me. God wants us to enjoy. See, the promises of the Lord is joy. You can sit around the mullet grubs all day and have nothing to do with God. You go to the house of the Lord and go home empty. Or you go to the house of the Lord and go home with joy. You come to church, hallelujah, empty and be filled up. Or you can come to the house of the Lord and go home and blame everybody else in the church but you because you didn't get a blessing. Hallelujah. I want you to know there ain't nobody can keep you from getting a blessing. That's your choice. Amen. Well, that's your ideal of it. No, that's not my ideal. That's God's idea of me. Right. He said, Seek me while I may be found. And call upon me while I am nigh unto you. I am nigh you even in your heart and in your mouth. God's in your heart and He's in your mouth. Amen. You know what we do? We get in a form and we want to follow that. We need to get into the Spirit and follow that. That's right. Hallelujah. I told Mickey tonight, I said, Mickey, I want to preach early. Get me on that floor. I want to preach. Hallelujah. Why? We've got in the form <coughs> sing all night and preach 15 minutes to go home. Hallelujah. You can sing Sunday. You can enjoy the blessings of the Lord Sunday. Hallelujah. But tonight's my night to preach. Come on, amen. Glory to God. And I'm going to preach. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You say, oh, but now wait a minute, brother. Well, that ain't the way I want it. I just don't care how you want it. This is the way God wanted it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me go back here. Let me get the word of God once again here. Let me show you. But listen to what he said. Now, this is talking about a Christian. But his delight is in the laws 
of the Lord and in his laws do he meditate day and night. You can't cram your mind full of the stuff that's on Facebook and on all that junk. You can't fill your mind with it and come to the church and get your mind on God. You can't fill your mind full of television. Hallelujah. And the thing that they're showing on there, the news is vulgar and mean and aggravating and sinful. Amen. Y'all don't like that dude. Come on. You heard him preach against television a long time back. Yeah, right. Hallelujah. Some of you television hogs, you need to listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Listen to what he said. <laughs> and you shall be like a tree planted by the river of water that bringeth forth its fruit in its season, and its leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Ain't that a promise? Amen. Now listen to what he said. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Let me go back. Let me go back and show you, show you something. Why some of you ain't prospering. Hallelujah. Let me, let me read you something. Glory to God. You ain't going to like this. Just going to hurt my feelings so bad because you don't like it. Praise the Lord. You come on back Sunday night. Uh, well, not Sunday, but I'll preach to you again next Wednesday night. Praise the Lord. Let me find what, I, what I'm going to read to you. Heard him again. Praise the Lord. Now listen to what he said. Now this ain't what I'm saying. Will a man rob God? Yeah, you have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and in offerings. Now listen to this next one here. What he said. You are cursed. <laughs> With a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring me all your tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now, my house, and prove me now here with, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not. Listen to this. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that ye shall not have room enough to receive. Now wait a minute. I don't believe that, Brother Walt. Well, that's all right. I'm going to believe it or not. I'm going to preach to you. This is what my Bible said. Now your Bible, you may have took that the old man and said, that somebody would preach something out of the Bible. He'd take his scissors, he'd cut it out, and they'd say, the Bible said that. He said, my Bible don't say. It didn't because he took a pair of scissors and cut it out. And that's what a lot of you have done in your heart. You cut the Word of God out and live like you wanted to and done what you wanted to and live like the devil and said, it's all right. It ain't all right. Amen. Amen. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you need to be married all the time. Bless him, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless him, Lord. Listen to what else he says. In this 11th verse of the third chapter of Malachi. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And he shall not destroy the fruit of your, of your ground. Neither shall your vines cast your, cast your fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a, a delight some land, saith the Lord of hosts. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to take off something. People are always saying, Brother Walls is rich, and Brother Walls, he got this, and Brother Walls has got that. There's one thing on, that I do. There's not a dollar goes in my pocket that, that I am no good color. I want y'all to know that. And I am blessed. I'm blessed. I'm 80 years old. And I want you to know that I know that I'm younger than some of you that's, that's a lot younger than I am. I'm more healthy. Why? Because I've done what the Bible said. Bless it. God's blessed me. I'm not preaching about, hallelujah, something that I don't know about. Amen. You ain't going to get no words till you learn how to live for God. Amen. The church 
will get no worse until you learn how to live for God. You can argue with the Bible all day and die and go to hell and say, well, I know Brother Wallace told me about it, but I didn't do it. Hallelujah. My, it's quiet in here tonight, ain't it? <coughs> Hallelujah. But listen, let me go to the ungodly now. The Bible said the ungodly are not so. But are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. What are you saying, Brother Waltz? I'm saying you can be tossed here and there, here and there, here and there, and never gain nothing. Amen. My dad told me when I was a young man, he said, a rolling stone never gains no moss. <laughs> Hallelujah. Stay with me now. I want to wake up some of you up. I want you to go home and I want to, don't you think about this. God blessed you, but did you deserve that blessing? Now think about it. God gave you, but did you deserve it? God took care of you, but did you deserve it? Did I deserve it? Hallelujah. I feel like I did because I've done everything I know how to do right for the Lord. I don't do wrong. I don't say bad words. Hallelujah. I don't use bad words. I don't use bad language. I don't talk that way. Praise the Lord. And if you do, you're wrong. Amen. And God's not going to bless you. Right. Hallelujah. <coughs> I want you to know that I, I give thanks to God probably more times in the day than the whole church does. Probably pray more every day than everybody in this church does. And you say, well, I don't believe that, but what won't you come down to the house, David and then Sister Wilma, a day or two, and just see, see for your own self. You don't have to take my word for it. And you pray every time we pray. Hallelujah. And you, 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 every time that we, we give God the glory, you do too. Praise the Lord. And we'll, we'll just see what God does for us. We may have time because we <laughs> But why ain't I blessed? Because you ain't done that to be blessed. Do you stay with me? Are you still with me? You don't still, when you don't do anything to be blessed, why would God bless you? Amen. But I, you know, hallelujah. You know when people stand and they sing, Oh, how I love Jesus. And then they go out the door. And live for the devil. Mm -hmm. Did you know that all liars have their part in the lake that burns with fire? Amen. And you've already sung a lie. Whether you sing a lie, tell a lie, live a lie, or whatever, it's still a lie. You can't be can't be like a tree planted by the water and and wish wash. The Bible said that a double minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Listen to me, church members. I'm preaching to you tonight. Now, I'm preaching to the church members. Christian, Christians, they already do this. Church members don't. Come on. Hallelujah. It's time that you begin to look at your own self. One time I got to feel sorry for myself. I got to thinking everybody was mean to me. They just don't like me because I'm a preacher and they're mean to me. And I got to thinking that and I got to talking out loud and I finally just got up out of the bed, put my glasses on, and I walked over to the mirror and I said, Poor little work! Everybody dislikes him! Poor little thing. And I talked to myself till I got ashamed of it and I repented before God and went back to bed and went to sleep. You see, the thing we do, we get to feeling sorry for ourselves. You know, pity party. 
Pity parish. Oh, little guy, let me go back here. Now let me show you what God says about you. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Think about that. The Lord knoweth the ways of the righteous but the way of the ungodly shall perish. You ain't got a chance. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you're ungodly, you ain't got a chance. And get what it says? This is what it says. For the Lord knoweth the ways of the righteous, but the, un the ways of the ungodly shall perish. I preached on the sheep and the goats. Hallelujah. And the separation that God says he's going to separate. You know, a uh, goat will eat the paper off of a tin can. Mm -hmm. He'll eat the bushes plumb down till they die. You can throw him down on the ground and he'll get up. But a sheep, you can take him out there and just let there be just a little ditch and he lays down and he gets in that little ditch, flat his back, he can't get up. He'll lay there and die. He won't, he'll just give up. Hallelujah. That old belly goat, <laughs> he'll fight. Are you ready? Hallelujah. Are you ready to be meek and let God use you? Are you ready to be a billy goat and eat all the things the world offers you? Think about it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Who are you after tonight, Brother Waltz? You? <laughs> are you preaching to me? I sure am. Ain't you, ain't you ashamed of yourself to preach to me that way? No, I'm ashamed that I haven't preached that way to you and kept you lined up where you ought to be and get in and serve the Lord with love in your heart. There ain't nothing any worse. Well, let, let me tell you what the Bible said. I'm not picking on you women, but I won't tell you what the Bible said. The Bible says, He that hath a good woman has a good thing. Now, ain't your husband ought to be proud of that only. Okay, let, let, let me put you in word two and one. But he that hath a bad woman, now this is my interpretation, am I right? He that hath a bad woman has a bad thing. You got a bad woman? A good thing. I wouldn't say that. She's driving home. But anyway, you ain't going to get me in, get me in the doghouse tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, when I first, when Tim and I first married, we got a little, little dog down there called Fluffy. And little Fluffy, he just, he just decided that he wasn't going to listen to nothing I said. He going to do what he wanted to do. He runs off with them girls. Two of them, he'll run off. He'll go out in the yard. He'll take off down the road anywhere else. But he stays in the yard whenever one was there. So he decided he'd just run around the car and he'd do what he wanted to do. But you know what he done? He run around the car and Wilma was standing there. He scotches up and he looks at her. <laughs> now what did he tell you to do, Fluffy? Get up them steps right there. Boy, he went up them steps and he was <laughs> down. Hallelujah. He thought he was in trouble. You know why? Because he disobeyed. Let, 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 me, let me tell you all something. Now this, I want y'all, I want y'all listen here. If you go home and I come to your house and I knock on the door and you look out and you see it's me. Just a minute, Brother Walsh. <laughs> and you have to go pick up all the garbage that you've got laying around and hide it from me. <coughs> that ain't going to do you a bit of good. God's already seen that. Amen. 
I'm not going to say that. I, would, I walk into the house. It don't make any difference with me. What you got laying around, the thing, hallelujah, that makes a difference, God's already seen it. Don't hide it from me. Because <laughs> God already knows where you live. But I try to live. No, you don't. Now, don't step there and tell me I try to live for God. But I just can't do it. When did the devil get through telling you that one? Hmm. Listen to what the Bible said. My grace is sufficient. Amen. Hallelujah. Seek me and you shall find me. I am the Lord. <laughs> My Lord. What what did happen to it? Well, you the devil come along and deceived you and you went to sowing. And now you've got a you got a patch of cocoa burrs and you don't know what to do with them in your life. Like they what to do with them. Right. Tell this altar to you get them all put on the blood. I know we ain't gonna shout tonight. I didn't expect to shout when I come here. But I know what God gave me to preach. And that's what did he give it for? God didn't give me this message to go First Baptist Church in Christian to preach. He didn't give it to me to go over to uh, Dawson, the one of the churches over there, preached. He gave it to me for midway. Are you going to act on it? Or are you going to just shh, let the hair wind blowing through your hair? Lady, the mirror down there at, at Brook Port is a lady in. She's got a convertible. I went up to was paid the water bill. She said, this is really a nice day, ain't it? I said, yes, it is. She said, I'm going to get out in my convertible after a while, and I'm going to let the wind blow through my hair. I looked at her, and she's used so much something on her hair. She ain't got very much left, but not, not, not as much as I have. And I thought, be careful now. It may blow away. See, I didn't care for getting out there and riding in her in her convertible, but she wanted to sort of put that emphasis on it. Praise the Lord. There was just one thing I know, Sister Brenda, that I wasn't riding in her convertible. <laughs> See, listen, how they do it. Do you know it's time that we the Bible said now listen to this. The little foxes is what spoils the vine. What do they do? They get on the vines when they're tender. They eat them vines. They chew the bark off of them vines. And the vine die. The little foxes is what does that. The big foxes, they want fruit. The little foxes want the vine. There's too many of them still chewing on the vine. He said, Paul, this is what Paul said. Paul said, I can't preach to you on milk, strong milk. Hallelujah. But I have to, I have to preach to you. Uh, I can't preach to you the, the milk. The milk. I have to keep you on, on the pacifier, in other words. You know what happens? Virgil, look at me. <laughs> if you'd been on the pacifier all your life, Here's the way you look. You'd be around that, wouldn't you? <laughs> Hallelujah. I preached on being around mouth one time right here. That's fine. Now look, look, and you say, hey. Well, I, I think about all right. I the Lord he Bless me one time. I remember 25 years ago, I got a blessing from the Lord. What have you been doing since then? I got a blessing Sunday, and I got a blessing tonight. I like to preach like I'm preaching tonight. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 
But Brother Walt, I don't like to hear you. Come on with it. Hallelujah. Hey, honey, don't worry about hearing me. You done closed your heart up to God already. You ain't going to hear that. I say anyway. If you do, you ain't going to do it. It has to go further in these ears. It has to get down in your heart before you do anything about it. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. If it don't get down in your heart, I, want, I know y'all say, well, Brother Walt, why are you so hard tonight? Because I've been getting in your ears and I ain't got your heart. I want to get in your heart. I want this thing to run down in your ears and get down in your down in your belly to where you can do something about it. Into your heart, into your mind. I'm going to stroke the pure mind by the way of remembrance. You don't like me, do you? Amen. I love you. I love you. I love you. Amen. I may not like you, but I love you. And the only reason I love you is because God's told me I had to. <laughs> And tell what he said. He didn't tell me I had like it when he said I had to look. Come on now. <laughs> what are you saying, Brother Walter? <laughs> I wake up every morning and look at Tonsad, Brother Walt. See, but you love him. I love you. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I love you because I want to. Hey. <laughs> uh, now, let's, let's stop the family feud right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. But now, you're just think. I get up in the morning, and I can see nothing hardly. And I, I go in there, and I leave my glasses off, and I'm trying to look in the mirror. And my hair is sticking up all over my head. All three of them. All three of them. <laughs> and uh, I go in there and I'm trying to figure out which one is funny. I thought, oh, well, I've got to put my glasses on. And you know, I've got artificial eyes. Then I have to take my artificial teeth out <laughs> and brush them. <laughs> Come on now. And then I have to comb my art, my hair and I have to hunt them up to do it. I'm in bad shape, but anyway, God's blessed me. All you people look up here at this black hair I still got. You know, I was you polish can. <laughs> Y'all think with me, though. I'm, I'm kidding with you now. <laughs> because you know the only thing that makes me makes me mad about, the, about having black hair the Bible said that the gray hair it, it calls it wisdom wisdom and when everybody looks at me they think I'm the dumbest thing that ever walked I'm not in the right hallelujah but anyway man oh, you cool. <laughs> <laughs> let, me read, let me read this one more time Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Hey, the Bible should show the very parents of you. Don't sit down where people's cussing and all that stuff. Get away from them. Hallelujah. Would you, but Brother Walt, I sit down at the table with a bunch of preachers. And they asked me to have coffee with them. And directly I heard one start cussing the man. And got up and said, I, I whoop you right here. And I, I went ahead and paid for my coffee. And I went home and I haven't been back since then. It's been a few years back. Well, Brother Walsh. Why didn't you go back and teach them something? Let me tell you something. If they're Christians and they don't know anything any more than that, they never will know nothing. Don't waste your time. That's right. I got up and left and they said, why didn't you come back and drink coffee? I said, I can hear all the cussing I want to. I can go to the tavern if I want to cussing. Probably taught them more walking away than you would if you stayed. That's right. I'll tell you what now, don't, don't expect me to. 
Don't expect me to intolerate your your mean, act, nasty mm -hmm. attitudes. Mm -hmm. Your talk. If you're sanctified by the power of God, you stop that. If you don't stop that, you ain't sanctified. That's right. Hey, God loves me and He loves you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Listen. God's done a good thing for all of us. But what, what, what do we, why don't we take advantage of what God wants us to do? Church, listen to me. You can be rich if you'll do what the Bible tells you to do. But as long as you deny it and say, I ain't going to do it, you're going to live in poverty. God expects this out of us. Amen. 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 Hey, Brother Walsh. Amen, Brother Walsh. <laughs> amen. I believe. <laughs> you don't have to amen me. I'll amen my own self. Amen. I'll take this hand and amen this hand. There was a lady who come to me not too long after my wife died. And she said to me, your wife's gone now. Don't have any reason why that, that me and you can't get together. And my wife had been gone probably two weeks. You know what I took? I done that kiss. I said, let me let me tell you something, lady. I said, if I'm gonna shake hands with somebody, I got two hands. I'll shake my own hands. And I turned around and walked away. Why, Brother Wallace? How did you? My wife hadn't even got cold yet. You know, I, I felt like that she was pushing me, trying to push me, and don't try to push me. I won't let you push me. Amen. Hallelujah. I may turn around and walk away. I may go home. I may not say a word, but don't come up on my front porch. Because when I get home, and you come up on my porch, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to knock your socks off. <laughs> That's the way I'm going to do the devil. That devil ain't going to follow me home and come in my house and keep me awake all night talking and carrying on and telling me what a bad guy I am. I want you to know I know how I live and I don't have to put up with the devil and you don't either. Hallelujah. He'll let you follow you home, sit down and talk to you all night, keep you awake, keep you on pins and needles. I don't know what preacher do, but I feel this. Hallelujah. Stand up for yourself and tell the devil to get behind you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I know there's people so contrary, so contrary their foot itching and they scratch their head. Hallelujah. But that's hallelujah. You don't have to put up with the devil. Yeah. <clears throat> you can love God with all your heart. I appreciate the Lord, don't y'all? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to sit in here and talk to you just a minute. I'll still, I'll still be pastor Sunday, so y'all come out. <laughs> y'all come out Sunday morning. Let's have a good time in the Lord. Y'all don't have to listen to me the next week.